Welcome and thanks for joining. My name is Jen Gündogan and together with my colleagues Christian Amsis, Thomas Schmidt and Matthias Wehrlich, we worked on a comparative performance study that evaluates content object security in the context of CoAP and the information-centric architecture NDN. If we look at the common IoT deployment, then we see they consist of resource-constrained devices that connect to cloud services through potentially untrusted gateway nodes. And these gateway nodes perform protocol conversions, for example, from UDP to TCP, which means we can't use transport layer security between the end device and the cloud. And one solution that enables an end-to-end -end protection and goes beyond the reach of the gateway is to use content object security. The conventional method of providing protection to a communication is to use secured channels by establishing sessions between endpoints. On the other hand, when using object security, the data itself is protected and can be transmitted over unsecured channels. This method of protection also allows to potentially cache the secured objects due to the lack of sessions. Content object security is a prominent feature in the information-centric architecture and slowly transitions into the host-centric world. In the remainder of this talk, I will give an overview on the different deployment options that we considered in our evaluations. Then I will present our comparative analysis, and then I conclude and draw the next steps for our future work. Our first deployment option uses CoAP over DTLS 1.2. CoAP is a request-response application protocol like HTTP, but was designed for the constrained IoT. The communication between IoT devices and the gateway secured with the datagram transport layer security protocol, and the uplink to the cloud servers on the internet side is secured with TLS. Since security channels terminate at the gateway, this deployment does not provide an end-to-end -end protection. The second deployment option uses CoAP with OSCore, which is an extension to CoAP and was published by the ITF in summer 2019. In OSCore, CoAP messages are encrypted and authenticated and then encapsulated into an outer CoAP message. This message is then sent through the gateway to the cloud and an untrusted gateway is not able to peek into the protected object. This deployment option provides an end-to-end -end protection. In the third option, we use NDN, which is an information-centric architecture that follows the request-response paradigm like CoAP. NDN operates on the network layer and uses object security, hopwise forwarding, and in-network caching. And current research indicates that these features can improve the reliability of content retrievals in low-power and lossy environments. This deployment also ensures an end-to-end -end protection. All considered deployment options show similar security properties. Co-op over DTLS and co-op with OSCore provide integrity, authenticity, and confidentiality for requests as well as for response messages. If we have a look at NDN, then we see that it delegates the encryption of application data to the application itself. Integrity and authenticity is provided for response messages, and with the latest development version, they are also provided for request messages. For our comparative evaluations, we followed the research question whether OSCOR is the better alternative for secure networking in the IoT. In our evaluations, we analyze different metrics that are relevant for operations in constrained IoT systems. We performed all of our experiments on real hardware using the IoT lab testbed, which deploys IoT devices on several sites across France. We used the M3 node as our hardware platform, which features an ARM Cortex-based architecture with 64 kb RAM and 512 kb ROM. All boards also include a 2.4 GHz-based IEEE 802.15.4 radio transceiver, with basic Mac layer features like media access with collision avoidance mechanisms. Our firmware on the IoT devices uses the RAID operating system and the external packages Time DTLS, LibOSCore, and CCN Lite. We deploy our experiments on two different topologies. First, we use a single hop star topology with one gateway node and 10 content producers. And then we use a multi-hop topology where we extend the star topology with five additional forwarder nodes. For our experiments, we consider a converged cast scenario. This means the gateway periodically requests a two byte temperature reading from the IoT devices. In our first analysis, we look at the packet structures for each message type of all considered protocols. We have to keep in mind that we are using a radio technology that is optimized for long battery lifetimes. This means we have a low bandwidth and higher latencies. 
Another constraint is the maximum frame size, which is limited to 127 bytes. Any frame that surpasses this limit has to be fragmented, for example with the 6 low pen adaptation layer. Any additional packet overhead generally increases the packet airtime and makes transmissions more and more prone to packet losses. For comparability reasons, we configure each deployment with the same security algorithms, which is AES128 in CCM mode and 8 bytes for the message authentication code. We first consider the packet sizes for CoAP without any security measures and observe a MAC header size of 28 bytes, IPv6 with 6 low pan uses 35 bytes, the UDP header consumes 6 bytes and the actual CoAP request message uses 18 bytes. For the response we observe similar sizes, but the CoAP part reduces from 18 bytes down to 9 bytes. This reduction for the response message comes from an optimization that CoAP is using. Responses do not include the resource endpoint URI that is in the request. Instead, they use a 2-byte token to match the corresponding request. CoAP over DTLS introduces 8 new message types that are used in the DTLS handshake process. Three of these messages hit the maximum physical frame size and need to be fragmented in order to be properly transmitted. This re introduces additional overhead for the MAC header and 6 open header. The request and response messages of CoAP increase both by 26 bytes due to the added security. If we look at OSCOR, then we observe increased packet sizes compared to CoAP without security measures. But we also interestingly notice that packet sizes are smaller compared to the CoAP over DTLS setup, although we have similar security properties. We now move to the NDN setup. Because NDN replaces the network layer, we do not see a packet overhead related to 6 open and UDP. The MAC header counts 23 bytes like with previous deployments. The interest packet, which is the request message, and the data packet, which is the response message, show smaller packet sizes compared to the unsecured core case. Interestingly, the response in NDN is larger than the request and this is because NDN reflects the content name that is present in the interest message back in the response message. If we apply security measures in the NDN setup, then we observe that responses increase by 46 bytes. And we learn from this dissection that the DTLS session establishment is quite expensive. We now have a closer look at the packet overhead that results from the activated security measures for each protocol deployment. The structural overhead represents additional bytes in the header that appear because of encoding the security fields. The context ID identifies the correct security context and key material for the security operations. The nonce represents an ideally randomly chosen number which feeds into the IES algorithm. It has to be the same nonce for the encryption and the decryption process Therefore, it needs to be sent to the communication partner. The message authentication code is a result of the AES and CCM mode and is necessary for an authenticated encryption of the message. In DTLS, we observe a structural overhead of 11 bytes. The context ID, which is the epoch field in the DTLS record layer, has a size of 2 bytes. The nonce and message authentication code both consume 8 bytes respectively. Since DTLS is situated below CoAP, it cannot distinguish request and response messages. This explains why the packet overhead is the same for both message types. In OSCOR, the structural overhead is much smaller compared to DTLS. This is because CoAP uses a simple binary format to encode header fields. It also supports type length value fields to efficiently encode small numbers and strings. In our setup, the context ID uses only one byte to identify pre-shared keys. OSCOR transmits one byte of the nonce, but the actual nonce is built using implicit information from the rest of the header elements. The resulting message authentication code of the AES algorithm is transmitted with its full 8 bytes. Because CoAP is aware of the request response message binding through other header elements, the nonce can be omitted from the message and obtained from the request state of the requesting node. NDN also uses an efficient type length value header encoding. The structural overhead for the security related fields is 5 bytes and the context ID is config configured with 1 byte. 
In NDN, each content name strongly binds to the content itself, and the name is present in the request as well as in the response. Therefore, we chose the content name as the nonce for the AES operation. Since encryption is done on the application layer, we get the 8-byte message authentication code from the AES operation and a 32-byte code from the HMAC operation that NDN performs on the full packet structure. We observe from this overhead analysis that OSCOR is able to reduce the security-rated packet overhead compared to COAP over DTLS by reusing protocol features from the COAP header. In our next evaluation, we measure the completion times for all content requests across all sensor nodes. This means we measure how long it takes for a request to be satisfied with a response. From our experience with the 1504 radio, we expect completion times in the range of milliseconds. Coop and NDN also use a retransmission mechanism and we configured five retransmissions with a two-second timeout between each of them. Thus, if a request is not satisfied within 10 seconds, it is considered to be timed out. We first consider the single op case and inspect the completion times in a cumulative distribution. For all protocols, close to 100% of all requests are satisfied in the millisecond range. The unsecured NDN and co-op deployments show the fastest completion times, which is sensible because of the smaller packets. Coab over DTLS shows the slowest completion time with an average of 17 milliseconds. We now look at the more delicate multi-hop scenario and see the expressive staircase pattern for each deployment. It reflects the five retransmissions with a two-second timeout interval. If we look at the completion times close to the 10-second mark, then we observe the amount of requests that did not successfully complete. Both NDN deployments were able to complete more than 95% of all requests, while the co-op deployments have success rates below 80%. We also observe a worse operation for NDN at the 2-second mark. This is because NDN induces more traffic on the multi-hop path due to the hopwise retransmission feature. While it may increase the load on first sight, it is nevertheless able to recover more messages from the on-path caches than the end-to-end -end retransmission of COAP. We also identify that protocols with larger packets perform worse. From these measurements, we see that the hopwise content caching of NDN increases the reliability of content requests in low-power and wireless regimes. We saw that retransmissions can happen quite frequently in lossy environments. In COAP, the end-to-end -end retransmission happen on the application layer, while in NDN retransmission happen hopwise on the network layer. With the next evaluation, we want to quantify the cost of retransmissions on the CPU load and measure the request creation time for the initial request and the request retransmission. We observe that COAP has the fastest request creation time at close to 300 microseconds. COAP over DTLS and OSCOR increase the creation time due to the security operations to close to 600 microseconds. NDN shows longest request creation times with close to 800 microseconds. The huge difference to COAP mostly comes from the different implementation qualities of the network components. If we take a look at the request creation times for retransmissions, then we observe a different behavior. Almost all protocols display a more or less constant creation time that is below 100 microseconds. An exception to that is the COAP over DTLS deployment, and this results from the layering nature. DTLS is situated below COAP, and the retransmission buffers of COAP contain the plain requests. Each retransmission traverses the DTLS layer to become encrypted and authenticated again. Our conclusion from the results are that the DTLS session layer generates higher loads on retransmissions. In our last evaluation, we inspect the protocol latencies on frequent endpoint changes. DTLS uses the 5-tuple IP source, port source, IP destination, port destination and protocol to identify the endpoints of communication partners. To measure the effect of frequently changing endpoints, we send requests into the IoT domain from the same communication partners, but with differing endpoint information for every fifth request. All deployments, excluding CoAP over DTLS, don't use endpoint info to identify security contexts. 
This is why they all perform quite similar. The distribution of completion times fall mostly into the 10 to 30 millisecond range. The COAP over DTLS measurement shows a percentile share of about 20% at the 100 millisecond mark. This is the duration that it takes to finish a handshake, which consists of 10 handshake messages. Our evaluation shows that the session establishment implies slow security handshakes, which is especially a problem with frequently changing endpoint information like the source IP address or port. We want to highlight three takeaways from our comparative performance study. First, OSCOR brings a lean object security to the constrained IoT. It is able to leverage protocol features of CoAP and therefore shows a small header footprint when compared to CoAP over DTLS. Second, NDN shows a higher reliability than the other protocol deployments, which is due to the hopwise content caching. Third, CoAP over DTLS shows an expensive session overhead, especially when session state is frequently being changed. For our future work, we plan to extend OSCOR with caching capabilities. From there, we intend to build a reliable, restful, information-centric web of things by reusing the hopwise forwarding and retransmission features of NDN in OSCOR. Thank you for listening. We support the recent ACM initiative to reproducibility. For this, our experimentation code and data are publicly available at this GitHub URL. All protocol implementations are part of the free and open source IoT operating system, Riot.